What's going on in the Atlantic right now with Hurricane Barrel is nothing short of historic and unprecedented. And you know me, I do not use either of those words lightly. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. We're going to talk much more on why it is historic and why it's unprecedented later in the video. But I do want to give the best information that I can give to our friends in the Windward Islands tonight and throughout the rest of the Caribbean when it comes to Barrel. So we're going to break that down and go through it pretty slow. Before we get into all of that as well, tune in. Sunday night, June 30th at 8 o'clock on this channel. We're going to have a special edition, a live stream of Tropics Watch Live, where we're going to go over a lot of the latest information in depth and answer your questions. It'll be interactive. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button for me. Give this video a thumbs up so you can get notification on when that goes live. Again, that's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, June 30th. Also in this video, we're going to go through the long-term future of Hurricane Barrel, whether or not it's going to impact the United States. There are indications that the U.S. is still in play, unfortunately, for Hurricane Barrel. So we're going to take a look at that in a little bit as well. And then we also have Invest 94L and 96L out there. We have the latest modeling on that. Both of those have a high chance for development. All right. So just looking at this, you would not think that this is a June hurricane. This certainly has the August or September look. It is a very healthy looking hurricane. Unfortunately, again, this is the visible satellite. I wanted to show you that because it, you can see the ripples in here and just see how well defined this storm is. We're losing the daylight in this part of the Atlantic, and that is why we're getting things to fade off a little bit. But again, this is going to be the last couple of hours of visible satellite. It does look like in the last couple of uh, frames here, the eye is trying to get a little bigger. Maybe it's wrapped in some dry air, or maybe it's going to go through one of its eye wall replacement cycles which again it breaks down its eye wall and then it kind of builds back a bigger stronger one so hopefully the second part is not the case but nonetheless there it is getting closer to uh, the island of Barbados it looks to be right now the center of the storm is going to pass south of Barbados but impacts are still coming and I'm going to try to show you those impacts kind of island by island here over the course of the next however long we're talking it's going to be a long video today I'm going to have the chapters in the description so that you can easily navigate if you're not interested in part of uh, the video I know your time is valuable and I know especially for watching from the Caribbean uh, you have a lot of stuff to do to get ready, and we are certainly thinking about you guys uh, in the in as you're out ahead of this. So here is the timeline, and things are going to start to go downhill for uh, the island of Barbados, and then the southern end of the Windward Islands, really Grenada, Saint Vincent, and the Grenadines, Saint Lucia. This is going to be these are the islands that I am most concerned with. You see, the cone is getting. It's, it's shrinking a little bit. It's getting a little more narrow. That indicates, again, the forecast accuracy is going up. But really, from about St. Lucia through St. Vincent and the Grenadines into Grenada, that is where I am most concerned at this point. Still going to likely have some tropical storm impacts from Martinique and then into the island of Barbados. I'll show you that in just one second. But for the rest of... Uh, let's go back to the actual track there. I, I went through. That is a satellite image of Florida. Uh, we're going to go back to the actual track of this, and we're going to see where we have to watch further down the line. Uh, getting pretty close to the Dominican Republic in Haiti, we're going to be watching this closely for the south end here. Some modeling does want to bring it very, very close to the island, and then right on through Jamaica. So again, this is going to be a couple day heads up. We've been talking about you guys in Jamaica for the last couple of days as well, and unfortunately, not much has changed in terms of the trajectory, so we need to make sure that we are getting our preps in order for a major hurricane, either very close or a direct hit to the island of Jamaica there. You see a Category 3 hurricane. That's going to be on Wednesday morning, 120 mile per hour storm, and then eventually as we get into the Yucatan Peninsula and then into Belize. Belize, we are in the cone parts of uh, Central America as well into Guatemala. There we go. So again, the cone represents where the center could go. So the center, if it takes a southerly track, could be right here. And then we're really looking at the impacts all around the storm. So again, just keep that in mind that this is not the cone of impact. It is the cone to really 
convey the uncertainty as to where the center, where the worst of the worst is going to track. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands that, that if you are in or around the cone, you are likely going to get impacts. It's just a little more uncertain as to who gets the worst of the worst at this point. And I think the next couple of graphics here are really going to highlight who has unfortunately the opportunity for that. So as we look at, uh, Barbados, you see our hurricane percentage has gone down in terms of hurricane force winds. That's going to be winds of greater than 75 miles an hour. The southern end has a low opportunity for that, but certainly a little bit better, relatively speaking anyway. We're still going to be getting lashed with some outer bands on Barbados, but nonetheless, uh, the highest opportunity for hurricane force winds are going to come from St. Lucia through St. Vincent and the Grenadines and then into Grenada, even onto Tobago. So again, just keep that in mind that we have a pretty large area here for potential of hurricane force wind gusts. So we just want to give everybody in that area a heads up. And then tropical storm force winds, let me change my color here so I can kind of highlight that. Again, could extend all the way into Martinique and then into Trinidad and the northern side of South America as well. So the worst of the worst, again, impacts coming to a large area, but the worst of the worst there are really where you see the yellow, the red, and the orange here, that's going to be our highest probability of hurricane force winds. We're going to have the storm surge potential, though, going through much of the Windward Islands, especially if you are in that right front quadrant, so right in through here. So even if the center does track right here, we're still going to get onshore winds, and that storm surge uh, is going to build on the island of Barbados and then the Windward Islands. I want to show you the latest modeling when it comes to how this thing could track in terms of the winds. Now, I showed you this in the earlier video yesterday. This is the European rendition, and this is, I think, doing a good job on the track. It might be a little low on the intensity part. We talked about this yesterday, that the global models typically have a hard time honing in on some of the big mesoscale features, the small-scale features that are making up these stronger wind gusts. So here we go. This is going to be Monday morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you see the winds starting to get pretty strong. I'm going to bring up my dabber here and you see what i'm talking about so not hurricane force at this point on barbados but we're still tropical storm force wind gusts on the island the hurricane force winds again that's they're not going to be at 76 miles per hour around the center i can assure you that they're already at 130 miles an hour as of three o'clock eastern time let me put this into motion a little bit more so this is going to be likely the worst period uh, of the day here the worst of the worst for Barbados so let's bring back out the dabber and you see again wind gusts anywhere from 55 to maybe up to 70 miles an hour here again in terms of the gust so just keep that in mind that we could still be pushing hurricane force wind gusts but more than likely tropical storm still nothing to sneeze at uh, for the island of Barbados now this is where it gets really critical and I want to make sure that everybody Everybody's paying attention to this. Here we go on uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines into Grenada into St. Lucia. We have wind gusts anywhere from 70 to 80 miles an hour. Um, and then right on through, again, the islands here. This is where it gets really bad. Let me uh, get, get – so you see it right there, right along that eye wall. 93 mile per hour gust and again that is underdone because we already know that the winds are going to be um, – over 100 miles an hour. This is really just to show you, again, the center of low pressure right here with the worst of the weather to the right of it. So again, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, Grenada. Those are the three uh, spots anyway that I'm most concerned with. And then still, all the way up to Martinique and down to Trinidad through Tobago, worried about you guys as well. But the worst of the worst is likely going to be right smack dab on the southern end of the Windward Islands. All right, so let's take this out a little bit further here, and you see there's some strengthening that does happen in the Eastern Caribbean uh, with this storm as it slides through the Eastern Caribbean. And then this is what I was talking about earlier for our friends in the Dominican and into Haiti. It gets pretty close to the southern end here. So we're really going to watch the, there's the center. We're going to watch the northern extent, and if you can't see with all the colors, here's the Haitian coastline, and then there's the Dominican coastline. Here is Puerto Rico for reference, so it's going to be gusty with outer bands coming through Puerto Rico and coming through the Virgin Islands, both U.S. and British Virgin Islands, um, St. Martin as well. Uh, so just, again, just something to be mindful of and to make sure that you're paying attention to those weather conditions. And then you see this going further, um, and I want to take this out. This is now Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the morning. Here is Jamaica 
we have a very nasty hurricane still making a beeline right for the island with the potential there for a direct hit. So we are really watching that closely for you. Another perspective here is going to be the rainfall. And you can really make out the worst of the worst again with this. This is kind of the European model track, if you will, uh, with the heaviest rain sliding through. So let's bring back out the dab where we can kind of measure that. These rainfall numbers are also going to be underdone. Always happens with tropical moisture. So again, that is like the, your lowest point in Grenada, in St. Vincent in the Grenadines, and in St. Lucia. Uh, that's going to be kind of your low point. I really think a lot of places are going to pick up double digits. I never want to say positive when we're dealing with a major hurricane, but it is moving on the faster side. So flooding uh, may not be the biggest concern, but still you have to add the forward motion if you're on the right hand side. So in the same sentence, if we have 130 miles per hour winds sustained around the center and you're to the north of that, it's more like 150. Again, that's the forward speed that you add there. That's uh, that's just physics that we watch and have to convey there. We're going to get more on that rainfall uh, coming up in a little bit later on in the video as we talk about Invest 94L and 96L into the Western Caribbean as well. There are the forecast wave heights. Look at that, 22 feet, 23 feet, crashing onto the southern end of Puerto Rico as well, anywhere from 10 to 15 feet. You see that happening as well on the southern end of the Dominican Republic. We'll take this further out, and then we have those big waves crashing uh, through Jamaica, 20 to 30 feet on the southeast side of Jamaica, and then eventually toward the Yucatan Peninsula and into Belize. So this is going to be Friday morning, really nasty waves right off the, uh, the east coast of the Yucatan there. Look at that, pushing 20 feet, 21 feet off the coast of Belize, uh, further down the coast of Belize, maybe a little bit better, relatively speaking. But again, that's something that you do not want to see, obviously. Oh, yeah, so there's this thing here. This is the model picking up. That's Invest 96L. So right behind Barrel, we have another system with a high chance for tropical development. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on into the show. And then it gets back out towards the Bay of Campeche. We are really watching for this area of the United States to still be in play for barrel. And again, we'll get to that in just a little bit after we talk about um, how you can stay updated on this. I'm going to have a Tropics Watch newsletter coming out tonight. If you want to stay updated on the Tropics, all hurricane season long, sign up, click orlando.com slash newsletters. You can also scan that QR code on your screen. And I mentioned earlier in the video tonight, we typically go live every Monday for Tropics Watch Live and have that conversation. Um, there's going to be a special edition of that tonight. If you're watching this tonight, it's that's Sunday, June 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Tune in for that. Again, hit that subscribe button if you're interested in that. But in the meantime... Every Monday, I'm going to send you a newsletter to your inbox just with an update on the tropics, whether you're impacted or not, what's going on out there, anything you need to be concerned with. So it's a good free way to get good, reliable information when it comes uh, to the hurricane season. Again, there's going to be one of those newsletters coming out a little bit later on on Sunday night. Also, if you want to stay updated as well or want to get a hold of me to ask a question, I'm super responsive in the comment section and on my social channels. So there it is. There's the Twitter, the Facebook, uh, the YouTube channel, as you found, my Instagram. Instagram, and then plain old email right there. Uh, so hit me up. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'm here for you guys. All right. So I mentioned the long-term life of Barrel. Here's the deal. I have the spaghetti models uh, overlaid on this, and I want to show you the upper le level pattern now is we have a very strong hurricane. Typically, it's the upper levels of the atmosphere that are now dictating on where this thing is going to go. So we're looking at the 500 millibar chart for all the weather nerds out there. And what's going on here is as we get through the 4th of July, it is going to be really, really hot in the deep south. I know it's summer, but I'm talking about crazy heat, upper 90s, triple digits. That is going to really protect the southeast corner in Florida of the United States. It's going to protect the Bahamas. Unfortunately, though, this does continue to push it further west and impact Jamaica. There are, the, there are the models right there. Again, a lot of them have it going south. But remember, if the center goes south, the worst of the storm 
is that right front side. So that is going to be north of the storm. And then right on into Cancun, there you go, early Friday morning. Watch what happens as we get into early next week. So this is going to be the back half of 4th of July weekend. This is Sunday, 5 o'clock. Our big chunk of high pressure now slides off the southeast corner of the United States, and it has the reverse effect now. So we have clockwise flow around areas of high pressure. So as this is pushing closer to Bermuda, we now have this having a tendency to lift barrel up out of the Bay of Campeche after the Yucatan and then lift it maybe to Texas. There's the potential for as far east as Louisiana. I do think at this point, though, uh, Florida is going to be protected, is going to be safe. I think that is a very unlikely solution that this lifts north and impacts Florida at this point. The other thing we're going to watch is where is this dip in the jet stream? You see the colors get a little bit lighter. That's going to be a trough. And when it gets out into this area, it's going to feel that tug north. So really anybody from the eastern side of Mexico all the way up to about Louisiana getting into the back half of 4th of July weekend, so July 6th, 7th uh, in that ballpark, Make sure you're paying very, very close attention to uh, the future forecast from the National Hurricane Center. All right. So I mentioned that this is unprecedented, that this has made history. And for those that have followed me uh, and followed the Just Weather channel, you know I hate the hype. You know I hate using those words whenever it's not warranted. So yesterday, on Saturday, Hurricane Barrel became the easternmost hurricane to develop in the month of June, smashing a record from 1933. That was a big, big season. That was one of the that was the most intense hurricane season on record. Uh, the other thing that happened today on Sunday, it became the strongest June hurricane on record, uh, beating Audrey of 1957. That had winds of 125 miles an hour, and barrel continues to strengthen. All right, the other thing that happened on Sunday, June 30th, was barrel became the earliest Cat 4 hurricane on record, beating Dennis from July 8th of 2005. Two things to point out here. That the first bullet point here was from 1933, the record that was broken. The third one was from 2005. Those are the number one and the number two most intense hurricane seasons that we've ever had. Okay, in terms of the ACE, accumulated cyclone energy, that's the other metric that we use to kind of measure. 2020 has the record for most storms, but there were a lot of iffy storms early on in the year. We had eight storms before we got our first hurricanes. We had a lot of weak tropical systems, tropical storms, tropical depressions, things like that, um, to really have this have the season be way ahead of schedule in terms of names, but way below in terms of intensity. The middle one, though, that was a lower year. So I do want to give you some kind of hope that 1957 was not a huge hurricane season, but unfortunately, not, uh, 33 and 2005 were. All right. On to Invest 96L. This is right on the heels of Hurricane Barrel, and it is expected to become our next name system. Well, it's going to be fighting with Invest 94L to be our next name system of the 2024 hurricane season. You see, unfortunately, though, look at this. The spaghetti plots, they are a little bit... Uh, they're a little wider. They're certainly not as tightly packed as what they were for Barrel. So it has the center going anywhere from Martinique to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, and then really all the way in between as well. There's some more divergence. A lot of them keep this entity into the Eastern Caribbean on a very similar path that Barrel has taken. But a couple of them curve them up closer to the Turks and Caicos and really splitting the difference between Bermuda and the U.S. Now, again, a lot of that is going to be uncertain until we get good Hurricane Hunter data up in that thing. But with that big chunk of high pressure, if it's slow enough, then that high pressure that protected the East Coast of the United States may force it back in. So there's a lot of things that we need to watch with 96L as well. 
Let's talk about 94L, and this might end up beating, this might be the next one. The window for this one to become a name storm, it's very low, and regardless if this becomes a depression or a tropical storm, the impacts are going to be the same. At this point, it's just going to be an organizational thing if it can develop that low-level center. It certainly has the spin here. It looks like it's very close, and again, that's why uh, they had that high opportunity for tropical development. We talked about this with Alberto, that the curvature of Mexico really helps to give it that last little bit of curl to get it organized. So this may help to get this thing developed. Again, regardless, this does not change anything for impacts. Here are the future model runs here. This is the future radar. This is the European. And you see right through here that twisting. So the European favors development. And then the very heavy rain, regardless of its depression, if it's just this disturbance or if it does become a name storm, our impacts in eastern Mexico are going to be the same. And for that, it's mainly going to be some gusty winds and um, some pretty heavy rainfall. So for that, I do want to show you the model estimates here. And you see this kind of torpedo coming in from the east. That is the rainfall from Barrel. So let's get out the dabber again. And, I mean, we're talking about potential for 6 to 12 inches of rain, maybe more. We've already had flooding in eastern Mexico, so the potential for more mudslides are unfortunately coming over the next couple of days. And then we'll have another shot if it continues to go uh, this way to get all of this heavy rain from barrel coming back up. But remember, there's that potential for it as well to start to lift maybe towards South Texas, maybe as far north and east as Louisiana. Again, that is still yet to be determined. Um, but look at all the heavy rain. This is back to barrel now. Um, seven, eight, nine inches of rain coming to the Yucatan Peninsula, northern Belize. Uh, also a lot of rain coming through Jamaica. All righty, guys. I know that was a lot. We talked a lot. I hope you found this helpful. Again, we are thinking of our friends in the Caribbean. First up, unfortunately, are the, West, are the Windward Islands, uh, really Grenada, southern end of Barbados, into St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Tobago, northern end of Trinidad. Please be careful. Make sure that you're taking this seriously. Again, powerful hurricane coming down the pipeline here. Remember, tonight, and if you're watching this in real time, uh, this is going to be June 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Join us for Tropics Watch Live. I will do my best to answer any and all questions. In the meantime, if you did find this content helpful, hit that subscribe button for me. Give this a thumbs up so that you can be alerted the next time we post new content. And we will catch you next time. Stay safe, friends.